Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today. You are with us to talk about um, how the state of New Jersey spends its advertising money and how other states are analyzing how their states are spending advertising money and pushing for ways to have more of that money stay local. So um, I'm Stephanie Murray. I work at the Center for Cooperative Media at Montclair State University. And um, we're really glad that you're here today. Um, a couple of things before we get started. Um, we will be recording today. We're recording currently, and we will make a uh, link to the recording available to everyone afterward. You'll get a recap email after this event with that link to the recording and also um, all the links that we share in the chat and anything that comes up during the discussion. Um, it's also likely that we'll make part of this recording public. We may, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. We may clip out some of your questions, but um, Lori Henson from Rebuild Local News is going to start us out today with a presentation um, looking at this topic from um, a national perspective and how Rebuild Local News is leading the way in the United States to help places like us um, take a look at how our state advertising dollars are being spent. And after that, uh, Joe Amditas from the center and I will talk to you more about some early analysis that we've done um, for New Jersey and the coalition that we're hoping that we can build together. Um, please drop any questions that you have in the chat got a small group here there's like 20 25 of us um so we'll answer any questions you have and after Lori and i are done talking we'll open it up for a conversation too um and hear what you have to say so Lori, why don't you join me up here on stage and mm -hmm. um take it away well thank you um i'm so thrilled mm -hmm. to be here with you all today um new jersey has shown um really uh, a lot of enthusiasm and um really excited about the possibilities here so um we are going to uh, i think joe is going to put up uh slides for us there we go and uh so i'll just start out by talking about what our organization does and then how that relates to uh, New Jersey. So, uh, and then turn it, turn things over to Stephanie. So um, let me make sure I can control. Uh, it says that I can control Joe's slides, but is it not, if it's not working, yeah, yeah, it's not letting me do it. You got to make sure you accept the, uh, the, the um, access there. You should be good to go, but if not, I, you can just share if you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me yeah. Why don't share I just have you share then? Here we go. Okay. Um, so let me see here. There we go. Uh, sorry, it's uh, being weird. You're good. We're in no rush. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. Let me see if that works. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, here we go. So the the thing you're seeing at the moment is our website that in, uh, describes what our um, advertising, government advertising policy, uh, we developed a toolkit and it describes what, what the bills do and sort of the rationale behind it. And there's a link to this page in the chat. So, um, so that's what that is. And then uh, let's take a look at um, our discussion. So what Rebuild was founded to do was to address what you all know all too well, which is that um, the decline of local news in America is a real, uh, has been a real crisis for democracy and for just the basic functioning of our, you know, governments, our communities. And so it has had an impact in every aspect of American life. And so- Lori, I yes. just want to make sure, are you are you showing your slides right now? Or because we see the webpage, I just want to make oh. sure- yeah, you yeah. got to switch to the other tab there. Oh, sorry. I'm no sorry. No problem. Uh, let's totally see. Totally fine. Let's... You're already just switch to your other tab there in that browser and it, it, it should be the slides. Sorry. And then just hit Thank slideshow. You. Yep. Just hit slideshow. Okay. Perfect. Sorry there about you that. Go. Carry, away. Carry on. Okay. So uh, you all are already familiar with the crisis in local news and what that means for your communities and for, um, you know, in every state in America. Um, so Rebuild was founded to address the crisis 
in the most direct and immediate way, um, because there's been lots of you know, scholarly and other kinds of, you know, industry talk about how do we fix this? How do we reverse the decline? Um, but what Rebuild believes is that we need direct action uh, to address these problems. We know that 1,800 communities have no local news source. They're what we call news deserts. Um, Medill at Northwestern just released its most recent update, um, and news deserts are growing. There's now um, a couple of hundred counties in America on the watch list for um, having no news access um, with with either no news source or news sources that are in a really vulnerable state. Um, ghost newspapers are papers that exist, but don't really employ staff to cover local news. Um, and we are losing, actively losing a couple of newspapers a week on average in America. So, um, so in order to address this, what we we need to realize is that this is not just a crisis for the industry, it's actually a crisis for democracy. We know that when a community loses a newspaper um, and an, or any news source, um, regardless of platform, what tends to take its place is misinformation, disinformation, uh, punditry, national level politics, uh, talk radio, conspiracy theories, all the things that uh, further divide us. And there's a term up there called pink slime. And these are sites that have developed that are funded by political interests. And they use AI and other software to sort of scrape the internet for quote, local information. Um, but there's no actual human beings behind what gets, you know, generated online. And so these sites are not, uh, they're not filling the the gaps left by the absence of local news. So uh, we know also that when an, a local news source dies and goes away, um, we get more government waste. We get more political polarization because all issues become national issues at that point in a community. Um, there's no one monitoring the spending of tax uh, dollars there's no one monitoring mm -hmm. um, the, you know, environmental costs of industry. Um, there's very little monitoring of corruption. So we know that there's also less voter turnout in these communities without news sources. There is less citizen engagement and knowledge of civic life. Um, there is fewer, you know, there are fewer choices on the ballot for uh, political office because candidates tend to not run as as the races are not as competitive in communities without local news. Um, we know that um, just the basic functions of, you know, government and regulation start to fall apart when there's no watchdog function for local news uh, and no encouragement of engagement by the community. So all of this is to say that strong local news is a public good. It is something that every democracy needs to survive. And it's not simply uh, about providing um, you know, help to an industry for its own sake. It's actually um, you know, supporting strong local news supports the entire community. Um, so what we believe at Rebuild is that because local news is a public good, it should have public support um, and that, uh, that it, there is some precedent for this. The, you know, federal government and uh, other, you know, government entities have supported local news in the past, starting with the very earliest stages uh, or, or very earliest era of our republic. Public, um, when the Post Office Act established friendly postal rates for newspapers and later magazines, um, they granted broadcast licenses to local stations as cable was expanding through the nation. Um, they uh, provided funding to create public access channels, and that helped provide local news to communities. Um, and of course, public media, NPR and PBS, um, have been a great source of news and information um, supported by government. So 
this is not a brand new idea, although it is something that I think brings up questions for journalists and publishers. Um, and so I want to address those questions that you might have about this. Um, but you know, despite the fact that government support for journalism is not new um, and that it is beneficial across the board for America and American communities, we don't do much of it, um, not compared to other democracies around the world. Um, you know, you can see there, you know, European countries traditionally offer more support for um, local news than the United States has. Um, so in 2020, Rebuild Local News was formed. Um, we have officially been uh, a nonprofit of 501c3 for a year. Um, and uh, But the actual people behind this effort have been um, building this effort since 2020. Um, Steve Waldman is the president and our CEO, and he is... Uh, you may recognize his name for having founded Report for America. Um, and uh, he's just, you know, uh, he's a well-known figure in trying to, to uh, help journalism uh, in innovative ways. So uh, we have in our coalition a number of state press associations, as well as, um, you know, journalism organizations, including uh, Afro-American newspapers, uh, um, yeah, Ohio Center for Journalism. We have uh, all kinds of uh, organizations that believe in the mission. And so uh, we're excited to have the reach that we have. Um, we also have um, financial support from a number of organizations that are, uh, that again, believe in this effort and are helping uh, us reach uh, all across the country into large cities and states. So um, what we have developed in uh, our attempt to address these problems is a whole policy menu. Um, we think that there are a number of ways that you can come at the new local news crisis from a policy perspective. And uh, what we are talking about in New Jersey is one of these ideas. Um, but some of the others are uh, providing tax credits for small businesses that advertise in local news, um, what we call moving the Overton window of, you know, nudging government into spending more advertising toward local news, making it uh, clear on, in, you know, educating them, making them aware of the benefits of this kind of a program. Um, but other kinds of policy approaches include subsidies for consumers to buy subscriptions. Um, Washington, D.C. is uh, in the process of creating this kind of a voucher uh, system where people could um, be receive subsidies to get to actually pay for their their local news of their choice. Um, fellowships like in the Report for America model, where we actually put, you know, people, reporters in newsrooms um, to expand and support local news coverage, um, payroll tax credits for news organizations to hire or retain reporters. Um, ultimately, our goal in all of these policy ideas is to get you know, human beings in newsrooms, um, strengthening the coverage. Um, and so another uh, idea is to help communities uh, replant their newspaper, purchase it from a chain uh, and reestablish it in the local community um, and to make government grants available uh, in some cases. So one of the uh, instances is the New Jersey Civic Information Consortium, which is a wonderful model for how government can support um, civic and, and community needs through high quality local news and information. So those are some of the ideas that we are pursuing. And it's important to us um, to think creatively about how policy can help support local news uh, without being, um, you know, dug into any single 
idea or any single kind of approach um, simply because we think this is an all hands on deck moment uh, and we need all of the help we can get. Um, so Rebuild right now is working all across the country. Um, we have uh, different levels of activity happening in different uh, parts of the country. Um, Chicago and New York, um, those cities have enacted executive orders that establish a uh, government advertising set-aside program. And uh, they've seen uh, some success with that, uh, at least in the case of New York City during the pandemic, um, they were able to direct about a million dollars of city spending toward uh, local and ethnic community publications um, at a time when it was very much needed. Um, Chicago ha established, uh, you know, uh, Community uh, Independent Media Alliance, and they are managing um, the Chicago uh, ad spend there. Um, San Francisco is in the process of getting its own uh, advertising set aside um, through its city government. Um, at the state level, Connecticut is in the process of getting a bill passed. Uh, it has passed their um, uh, Connecticut House and is going before the Connecticut Senate um, this coming year. Um, we also have uh, other efforts happening in California um, and in a number of other locations. So, so there's good momentum for these kinds of policy uh, moves. Um, so we put together a policy kit, and this is the link that you see at the top of the chat, um, and we'll post it again um, and send it to you. But uh, the kit that we put together offers some basic how-tos of how to develop this kind of a policy um, in your location. It uh, pulls together research of what we know about how advertising benefits local communities and how it can support and generate revenue for local news organizations. Um, it includes uh, in, input from experts from all over the world, really, from, uh, you know, even other countries that have tried similar approaches, Australia, Canada, and others. Um, there are also two model bills in the kit. One is a model executive order um, that offers a template for uh, a governor or a mayor to pass this kind of um, policy. Uh, the other model bill is for uh, a legislative action. And so um, legislative uh, bills are what we would like to see passed simply because they're more durable. They are, um, you know, they require the kind of grassroots organizing that uh, gives the bill a lot of power um, in a legislature. Whereas executive orders are great, especially uh, certainly executive orders gave us the New York City program and the Chicago program, um, and we'll take it. Uh, but we would like to see a broad, uh, you know, grassroots effort to get the state's lawmakers behind this kind of effort. Um, so what we hope is um, that all of our work um, is helpful as you move forward with this kind of a program. And our goal is always to work very closely with you to make sure that you are getting what it is that you want that's right, that's the right fit for New Jersey. Um, so we're here in a support role and we're here to to help cheer you on and make this happen. Um, so what we know is that when we direct public money toward the public good of local news, uh, it's also a good value for the taxpayers and for government. So um, local news is an effective uh, way to reach local communities in ways that other kinds of media cannot. Um, local news has the advantage Advantage of, of being the most trusted source of information for communities for the most part. And so we know that getting civic information uh, vetted by local journalists is an effective way to get critical information to people. Um, it's a way for government to ensure that it's not wasting its ad spend on 
platforms that are full of scammers and other unreliable information. Uh, we also know that uh, local news uh, audiences tend to be some of the harder to reach uh, people. And that includes older uh, people in the audience, people who are maybe less connected um, uh, to the internet, people who may be, um, you know, have other barriers to access for web-based information, but who, who may uh, be reliable readers of their local paper or listeners to their local radio station uh, and other kinds of local news. Um, and so we believe that any money that the government puts into local news is, is a solid investment and that government ads uh, can do their best um, when they're placed in local news sources. Now, it does mean that local news organizations need to track their own analytics and make sure that you're measuring your audience and that you're making that case to government that your local news outlet is, is a quality investment for government. Um, and so one of the, the jobs that we try to do is help local news prepare to receive uh, government support and to offer government evidence of um, the value that they're getting for their ad spend. Um, everything that Rebuild Local News does for our purposes has to be, we insist on it being a nonpartisan, First Amendment friendly approach um, to policy support. Uh, we want to make sure any bill or or policy that we get behind is content neutral, um, that we want to make sure that we protect the essential editorial independence that has to, um, that is required in, in a truly free press, free and independent press. Uh, we also want to make sure that the policies we get behind are future, future friendly, as we say, which means that um, they are not technology specific, they, they are flexible, and that they focus on the function of journalists in a democracy and not on any particular platform or any particular um, technology that may or may or may not change in the future. Um, and we want to make sure that we provide support and space for innovators as well, people who are changing um, the news in, in positive ways. Uh, as we said, uh, we're platform neutral. So we want to make sure that radio, television, newspapers, online sites, uh, podcasts all have uh, an equal opportunity to benefit from these policies. Um, we want to make sure that whatever we do we help local news um, build sustainability into their institutions um, and especially helping uh, organizations that are reaching underserved communities, traditionally underserved communities. And so we want to make sure that that includes nonprofit organizations, family owned organizations, um, organizations that are reaching uh, non English speaking audiences, um, you know, all kinds of, you know, organizations that simply can't be easily replaced. We want to make sure they're getting the support they need. Um, and so, again, the, the goal for all of this is to get more human beings in a newsroom covering local news, expanding coverage into areas that don't have good coverage. Um, and so that is our our North Star in all of this work. Um, so uh, New Jersey is hopefully going to be the next place that we are able to push this kind of policy effort forward. And so I'll turn things over to uh, Stephanie. No, go ahead. Um, to to kind of uh, introduce what we know about New Jersey and its media environment at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. All right. Um, you see my screen, Joe? Are we good? All right, cool. Thank you, Lori. So I saw a couple questions in the chat. They're very New Jersey specific. And um, Joe and I are going to walk through um, some slides to talk specifically about New Jersey. Because some of the questions, like what you just asked, Mark um, and Moshin, we actually don't know yet, but we're trying to find out. So um, let's tell you what we do know. So Lori talked about the different policy ways that Rebuild Local News Coalition is trying to advance public policy to support journalism across the United States. 
one of the things that we already have here, as she mentioned, is New Jersey Civic Information Consortium. One of the things we don't have here that we think that you might be interested in, and we're certainly interested in, is some sort of official directive, whether that's legislation or some other form of policy making that dedicates a portion of state advertising dollars to local and ethnic media organizations. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about. So the center has done some pretty early analysis of how the state's departments and agencies currently spend its advertising money. So this, what I'm going to share is solely limited to the data that we've pulled that's publicly available from the state of New Jersey about how its departments and agencies spend advertising money. So that's 15 departments and dozens of agencies. You can see them all at this link at the bottom. Um, Joe I'll drop it in the chat. So most, if not all of these, they control their own advertising and marketing budgets and decisions. There is not like a central office that controls advertising for the state. It's not how it works. Every department has decides within its own budget, which is allocated annually in the state budget appropriations process, they decide how what they spend in terms of marketing and advertising. And it changes wildly from year to year, as you'll see. So um, some of the departments and agencies that we analyzed, these are the departments that we're talking about. Um, like I said, there's 15 of them and dozens of agencies. So we're talking about agriculture, treasury, higher education, health department, human services, environmental protection, corrections. So a lot of very, very, very different um, types of advertising that you can imagine would come from these different departments and agencies. So this is how much has been spent annually by the departments and agencies we were able to analyze so far annually. So in the fiscal year 2023, we're currently in fiscal year 2024. So this is last year. The state's agencies and departments spent $32 million in advertising. The year before, 26 million. The two years before that were COVID. Almost 70 million and almost 80 million. A lot of that spending, as you can imagine, came from the health department. So a huge spike during COVID. It was much smaller in 2019. Then we were back to kind of average in 2017, 2018. Roughly over the last 10 years, the state has spent 25 to 30 million about on advertising by its various agencies and departments. There was also a huge spike after Superstorm Sandy, as you can imagine. And a lot of that came from the Environmental Protection Department, health um, and other agencies in the state. But this gives you an idea of the total amount that we're talking about here. So we're talking roughly 30 million bucks that's spent last year. And so far this year, we're on course to possibly exceed that in our state. So this is the pot of money we're talking about. So um, we have data going back 20 years. Looking over 20 years, this is some high level stuff we've seen. There are fewer people getting paid now than there were 20 years ago. So there are fewer um, end organizations getting advertising money. Part of why we think that is, is because today agencies, marketing agencies, which you'll see in a minute, get a lot of the money from the state. We believe they are likely spending it on social media platforms, YouTube, other places. Um, so 20 years ago, you'd see a lot of organizations including news organizations getting money. Today, that number is fewer because more money is going to marketing agencies. Um, and there are more agencies as payees now than 20 years ago. We talked about um, external events um, and large media organizations have consistently gotten money from the state. Gannett, Advance, Press of Atlantic City, Worrell Newspapers, there's several like that, that almost every year take in advertising. We don't see a lot of small organizations, especially in the last five years on this list at all. Um, and even some of the larger ones don't get a ton of money as you'll see. <clears throat> so in 
So this is looking at just last year who the top organizations that got ad dollars from the state. So this big one at the top is MarketSmith. MarketSmith is an agency. They are a marketing and PR and advertising agency. Um, we are filing OPRA requests with the state so that we can get a look at the contract that um, different agencies have with MarketSmith because this is a total spend. This $25,000, go back. this $25 million, that's a total spend across all the departments and agencies. And they all have their individual contracts with MarketSmith. And so we're gonna try to get those because my, my gut intuition says that they're probably using that money on um, you know, social media, YouTube, Google, um, Facebook, other places, but maybe not. And maybe, if, or do you get money from MarketSmith for ads? Um, if anyone does, say so in the chat, because I'd love to know. Um, but that's what we want to try to find out. Princeton Partners is also another large marketing and advertising agency. They got $2.4 million last year. Positive Solutions and Success Advertising, also agencies. Then you see Gannett, which includes Asbury Park Press, Bergen Record, and the Courier Post got 468000 Advanced Media, which is the Star Ledger, in its papers, 374000 And then something called the Set Truck Group, which I also believe in it is an agency, 368. So those are the top payees from last year. Joe, I can't see the chat. So if there's any questions, interrupt me. Will do. Um, cool. Um, so then we looked at last year, and I pulled out all the agencies and just looked at local organizations. Who is getting money that's local, that's not an agency? And this is what we found. So, of course, Gannett, Advanced Media, World Community Newspapers, that's a huge drop, though, between $375,000 and sixty two. Then the New Jersey Broadcasters Association, Press of Atlantic City, the New Jersey Herald, and they're only $4,000. That, that's it. After that, there were a few other small orgs that got maybe a few hundred bucks here or there. So the bottom line, we think, is that there are millions of dollars being spent. And as you can see, a lot of that money is going to agencies. It's not going to the hands of local outlets. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe MarketSmith and Princeton Partners is investing in you. And if they are, that's what we hope to find out by further analysis. But it's probably unlikely because most organizations have tended over the last 10 years to move their money into social media um, and search engines. Um, and uh, Kaushik, I see your I see your hand up. Do you want to ask your question now? Uh, hi, my name is Kaushik Ahmed. I publish weekly Bengali newspaper from New York for yeah. 33 years. But uh, this is for the Bangladeshi people, you know. So, so a lot yes. of Bangladeshi people are living in New Jersey. It's a lot, a lot. Yes, we do. So yep. That's why I'm uh, participating and attending this program. I just wanted to uh, clarify one thing. This is, uh, I think, uh, Lori mentioned that's an executive order in New York City. Mayor did. That number was 47, and he did it, uh, the, uh, the previous mayor, Bill de Blasio, in two, uh, 2019. But later, in 2021, we passed a bill in the city council. It's no longer the executive order. The bill number is uh, local law 83. So it is uh, no longer the executive order. This is the law now. The law and now, exactly. It said yes. this is 50% of the total ad money should go to the ethnic and community newspapers. Yes, yep. Yes. Not, and the, so not the other media, also only the newspapers. Right. And so, you know, in getting from the executive order to the law, like that's what we would like to see happen everywhere is something yep. more durable. Absolutely. Koshik. That That's what we hope to do in New Jersey is go straight to legislation. If, if that's what you as media organizations in the state want. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the role of the center in just a second. Um, so these are our next steps. Uh, we are going to ask departments and agencies for ad contracts for fiscal 23. We're going to see what we find. We're going to see what they'll share um, and see what we can find out. Hopefully this will give us some insight into how that money is spent. And then we will write a report based on what we find. 
we've already shared with you some of what we found just by going through the data. After we get some Oprah requests back, hopefully we'll have more information. Um, so here are the next steps, which kind of gets a little bit to what we were just talking about. Um, so these are some of the things we want to do. We would love to build a coalition of people interested in this. So if you see this and you want to help advocate to get some more, to get more of this money directed to local news organizations in our state, we want you to join a coalition. And in the coming weeks, probably after the holidays, we will share back with all of you and everyone in our networks a form that you can fill out and join a coalition. Um, we will send you email updates. We will communicate with you however you want. We also um, will publicly present this data. So everything that we just shared with you here, we're going to share that publicly. And we hope that. And that we're going to share it with you and your organization directly as well. Yes. Like when we build together, just want to make that clear because the chat is, is going off down there. You're going to get the data set. You're going to get the slides. You're oh, going to get everything yeah, yeah. for this. We're going to work together on this. It's not just going to yeah. be a top down thing. No, 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 no. We're doing some early analysis and then we're going to hand it over to you. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second here. Why? Um, so we want to publicly present this data. We're not done with our analysis yet. Um, like I said, we, we still have to collect some AI contracts and make sure our assumptions are correct because I've given you a lot of assumptions today about that data. We got to make sure that's accurate first. Yeah, we um, got to file OPA requests. We got to make sure the data is yeah. clean and we got to make sure that the process is going forward to the question in the chat about do we still have OPA in New Jersey? At the moment, we do. At the moment, and we're going to we try do, to take advantage of that as, as much as we can. Possibly not for long, though. And I'm happy to talk to you all about that afterward. Um, we also need to find a lead partner. Rebuild Local News can help with lobbying, but it'd be really great to have a local organization that can do that. Which we so cannot that, do legally. Which, we can't lobby. Exactly. Lobby. So that gets to the roles for each group. So the Center for Cooperative Media, we're part of Montclair State. We are a state entity. We cannot lobby. That's not our role. Our role is to do this data analysis, to share it with you all. We can help organize communication channels. And we also want to help you all prepare media kits. So once we get to the point that hopefully our state says, yes, we will put more of our money to local organizations, these departments can come to you and you have the analytics they need, the media kit they need to seamlessly advertise with you. Rebuild Local News is, is there to provide guidance and potentially help with legislation lobbying. They have model legislation. They're doing this in multiple states. They are an amazing resource um, and we're going to continue to work with them real closely. We really need a lead partner too, who can lobby. Um, to help with the legislation and really play a lead role. And then we need coalition members. We need a whole lots of you and us and anyone who's interested in this topic to be part of the coalition, to be to get the communications, to join the webinars, maybe to go and testify at the state, to call your senators and legislatures, legislators once it gets to that point. Um, so th those are the roles that we see um, happening. And then um, for more information, we'll share these links in the chat after Rebuild Local News and also our center. So I'm gonna stop my share and let's um, let's chat a little bit. Joe, you wanna queue up some questions or folks yeah. wanna raise their hands? Yeah, just use the raise hand function uh, feature at the bottom of the Zoom window and we'll call on you and then you can uh, you can ask your question. We'll bring you up on stage here. Oh, uh, I see Machine, perfect. <laughs> machine, go ahead and unmute and let's uh, let's hear it. Yeah, thank you very much. This meeting is very important. It means a lot for us. Uh, first, uh, as Stephanie talked about preparing a media kit and uh, getting ready with analytics, uh, that help would be very helpful for us if you could you know, help us, number That's one. That's great to no. know. My question is, to the, my question is, should we register ourselves with all the New York City departments and agencies as media outlets? Is there any way we can get in touch with them, give our information to them? So that should be the way at least they should, we should got to know each other, you know. So by the time, you know, this idea materialize, uh, then somehow we 
we'll be familiar with each other. You know. If possible, what should uh, we do? I, I can just speak to the fact that there's certainly no harm in you registering as a city vendor um, and, or, you know, or state vendor. Um, certainly in San Francisco, for example, that's that's something that they are now making a concerted effort to do. And the city is tracking more closely their spending. So getting on this uh, city or state radar saying, you know, we are a small business who qualifies for, you know, these kinds of contracts that's not a bad thing. Um, the the effort to get the, the state policy passed uh, is going to be a broader scale than that. But at, in the short term, that's certainly something you can do. Sheen, you good? Yeah, and good. And what about media kit, uh, Stephanie? Is it possible yeah. to yeah. organize yep. some workshop? Or, uh... Yeah, we are absolutely yeah. doing that. Yeah, we've already talked with um, two really amazing and respected um, media professionals in the state who have agreed to work with us on media kit. And I need to get in, back in touch with them and set that up. Probably what we're going to do is um, we need to talk with them about how it's going to work. I imagine we might do like a couple of uh, a webinar, but then it, we're going to need probably some individual coaching, someone working with you to look at what you have, um, help you improve it. We may need to also find money somewhere from someone who can give a grant because some organizations you may need to update your analytics you may need money to print media kit stuff um so we want to get into all of that it'll probably be after the holidays uh in january that we'll start this um also because we're going to announce soon that we're going to have an expo for community and ethnic media in this state on april 4th in trenton and um we want to have ethnic media meet with uh, PR agencies, communications firms, lawmakers. We want you to have your media kits ready for that. So we're going to kind of do the media kit thing on a dual purpose. That'll start in January so that you'll have it on April 4th, but you'll also have it for this effort too. I saw Selkuk had his uh, hand raised. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, did I you see want some to uh... in the chat I can answer later too. Yeah. Selkuk, did you want to unmute and, and ask a question? Yes, thank you for the opportunity. My question to uh, Lori, uh, I'd like to know, uh, I'd like to know if uh, Rebuild Local News had something to do with the eight dollars that CUNY did and how? Yes, so, uh, so the effort by CUNY to get New York's uh, bill through is started 11 took 11 years to do and so it had been in the works for quite some time and rebuild um from the start of our existence in 2020 um were very uh followed that effort very closely and worked with uh Darlie Gervais uh in in getting that program established and so that they inspired um the policy work that that we have taken on and so um they actually uh have a role in supporting my position with Rebuild Local to to scale that kind of of policy up to the national level. So they are very closely connected um, to our work, but they started it first. So they pre-existed uh, Rebuild. So a couple of the things I see in the chat, Mark, you made a really good point earlier about um, a lot of the, a big reason that these state departments and agencies contract with Princeton Partners or Success Advertising or MarketSmith is because those agencies develop everything. They develop the message, the the creative. They test it. Um, and they get it ready to go. So an agency doesn't have to decide what the ad's going to be. The mar the marketing company does all that. Mark's suggestion is maybe as part of the legislation, you ask the state to require in those contracts that a certain percentage of that placement be made with you. Um, because it's very unlikely that departments and agencies aren't going to use marketing firms because the marketing firms are developing the creative and the messaging too. Um, so that's actually a really good point. And um, no, I see so Lori, Steph you're nodding about that. Yeah, Mark, go ahead. 
Uh, on that point, what the sta- I, I'm a former state employee, so I'm sort of familiar with some of these things. Uh, they basically do a blanket contract uh, that nine contractors currently have for what's called statewide advertising and public relations services. Uh, so you've got nine contractors. It is done as a set-aside contract. So you have all small minority women veteran or type organizations who are who are eligible for that. So uh, so what one of the things you're going to want to get is the bid specification and what that requires. Right. So so the idea would be and, and frankly, um, I don't see this being a very heavy lift with this administration because they are very set aside focused. They've been amplifying those messages throughout. Uh, so it's just, I suspect this is something they probably haven't thought about, you know, to a point. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and, right. So um, m- my observation would be, uh, if you haven't contacted the director, the governor's director of communications, that may be a good place to start. Because it's all about messaging for them at this point. I would like to and jump in. Maybe a in here. I don't think in here. If Kara, Kara, wait, we got hands up and then we can, we can get to you. There is a set aside for small businesses. Why do we see... Kara, hey, Kara, we, we got hands up. You can get to you if you want to raise your hand. You need to back that out. The dollars are not set aside to small businesses, and that's not just a problem for journalism. Hang on one second. Let's just mark finish, please. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it, it, so if, if bidders on that contract, there, there, are small con- there are small companies. Market Smith is a small women-owned company. Right? And we're talking about how much money they got. They are a small women-owned owned company. It doesn't mean they can't get get big big contracts. Uh, it appears to me some people were talking about Set Rock Group. Uh, quick web lookup, you know, indicates that they too are a small a small a small company. How they operate, I have no idea. But that those are the challenges in dealing with set aside issues because they can be broad. Uh, they can be expensive. Right. Well, not 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 expensive. They can be lucrative if it's at the same time. Uh, just because you're a small business doesn't mean you operate on a shoestring all the time. You can be a very successful small business as small minority women veteran business. You know, that's the way the market works. Um, to go beyond that becomes a little harder because then you're doing picking and choosing. Right. You know, which one do I pick? Uh, so you've got nine companies out there who are doing those things or, or, already un, under the contract. So that's a, that's an area, I think, to to look at. And Mark, it'd be great if we could talk afterward, because um, I'd love to hear more about how who you think we should ask for specific information, because we haven't filed any open requests yet. We just done this really basic early, early analysis. So I really appreciate your insight. Okay, we got okay. Jungwon yep. up, then we got Ricky, then Kara, uh, who wants to make a comment. So Jungwon, take it away. I'll unmute you. You go for it. Okay. Yeah, hi, I'm I'm Jungwon from Yonam News Agency, and I have questions, Stephanie. How will the the Center for Corporate Media push the government to regulate advertisement dialogue for SM media, just like what CUNY has done? I know only, and you are doing working on it great. Yeah, so please give give us some update. Thank you. Yes, yeah. So here's the update, is that uh, we've done some early data analysis. We're working with Lori, and we're getting you all together. Um, we we cannot lobby. That's, we can't do that. Um, but we are helping to introduce this idea, and we're going to do whatever we can to support it, which is why we need... Um, a lead partner or two who can lobby because we do believe, um, you know, especially thanks to Rebuild Local News Coalition's expertise, that legislation is probably needed. And also, like Mark just pointed out, this is very complex. It's very nuanced. It's not just about, oh, Market Smith gets 25 million. What the hell? Um, It's very, very complex. And we need to be really careful and work together so that we don't accidentally exclude an organization or or include organizations that were not, are, were not meant to. And that'll mean members of the coalition working really closely with people in the legislature to, to make that happen. So, so we, there, there's been nothing introduced. There's no legislation. There's no nothing. All there is is, is this, our meeting today 
and this early data analysis and these slides that we put together for you. Um, and like I said, we hope to get more information about those contracts. Mark, you know, hopefully can help us make sure we ask the right questions um, so that we can bring more data to the, to, you know, to it. Um, and then we'll work together from there and we'll do everything we can to help organize and support. Um, but we like we we just we we can't be involved in lobbying. That's just where the line is for us at the center. I just want to pop in real quick and just make this very obvious statement. No one on this call or on this webinar is advocating or defending the current allocation of funding or the inequities or the big firms that are doing this. The whole point of this webinar is to bring folks like you together so that we can work together to fix this and direct the right and equitable amount of funding to the people who deserve it and need it most and the organizations that serve their communities. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. Like we are, we aren't in any way saying that like, yeah, the way that this is going right now is super chill and we want to continue this. We want to change this. And that's why we're hosting this, this call and why we're, we're doing this effort and going through the work and the process to fix this clearly fucked up situation, uh, to be frank. So just want to make sure well, everybody yeah, understand, and understands and also, that. Also, though, to, to Mark's point, um, we um, this is just what the situation is. And it, it may be that this idea has not come up in our state. Um, I don't think we need to assume nefarious sure. positions on anyone's behalf. This is just what the data shows right now. Sure. And when we find out more about the data, when we get answers, we're going to demand answers from the state we're through Oprah requests and other uh, forms of pressure. We're talking to leaders and policymakers and, and trying to get them to commit publicly to pushing for more ad dollars, specifically for local and ethnic media. As I shared that article uh, from our recent press briefing with the new acting commissioner of the New Jersey DCA. So we're trying to hit this from all angles. Um, and we're, that's why we're, we're doing these calls to make sure that everybody uh, in the state, all of our local partners are involved in this from the beginning and not just as an afterthought once we've already taken steps so that we want to make sure we are doing this in concert with you all, not, uh, you know, at, at relegating you to like a comment section. So just want to make that clear. And then, Ricky, I'm sorry, you've had your hand up for a while. Go ahead and take it away. Uh, do you want me to unmute you or you got it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Following up on what uh, Marcus said earlier, though, I am assuming that uh, these agencies or departments, though, before they give out the contract, they issue a request for proposal. And I think, um, you know, uh, when what I would suggest is that once they issue this request for proposal, it should also be a requirement uh, based on the RFP that went out that a certain percentage of whatever contract that they have should actually go to, uh, you know, ethnic media. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And that's exactly aligns with what Mark was saying, because everything does have to go out for bid. Any contract above, I don't know the exact amount, but it's like $7,000 um, has to have two bids. Everything above $10,000 has to have three or more. And so um, that's also an issue. Do all of us on this call know how to participate in that bid process? Um, and as part of that bid process, could there be something that says, if you bid, you need to commit X number of the dollars we give you to community and ethnic media. That's basically like, yeah, that's a great point, Ricky. And Thanks. hey, Oni, yeah. Oni, it's, Oni's up and then penned up. Yeah, mine is just a short comment. Um, to Mark's point and Ricky, we have already communicated with the communications director of the governor's office the governor's office and the DCA office are very much aware of this. And that's why, to everyone's point, this is the time to really get together, you know, and whatever the proposal is, whether 10%, 20%, 30% allocation of that ad dollars per year should go to ethnic media. It should reflect everyone, you know, so they really need to see a Force too. This is not like just, you know, one or two of us, but it's really going to be more impactful when they see us, you know, that we're not really um, stopping to get this because they are aware. Even the DCA office actually said that I need to talk to the, the governor again. They are very much aware since the time that we had this conversation with them. 
until now, we actually did not stop that, right? So I'm so happy that everyone here is fully on board and see everyone, that everyone wants to be part of this because this is yeah, the way. And, Oni, we should, uh, I'll dig out that link because remember you worked with a bunch of the folks on this call. We published a letter in the Star Ledger about mm -hmm. the topic. Yeah, yeah, we'll dig out that link and drop it in for everybody. Penda, take it away. Oh, you know, only really good stuff, um, Lori, really good stuff. Stephanie, thank you. I, I just wanted, and, and, and I think this has already been mentioned, but just to beat home the point that in order for any of this change to happen, us as media organizations are going to need to be at, be at the table and at the forefront. They're going to need to hear our mouths. They're going to need to see us. When I, when I was a part of this work in New York, I used to go to the RFP, I used to go to the bid uh, meetings, uh, you know, with the city and registered. I, even though I knew I would never win the bid, I registered so I knew what agency was getting the contract, how much they were getting it for, how much money they were supposed to be spending with ethnic media. I knew what the dollar amount was. I knew who the agency was. Um, and then we, there was a way for us to hold them accountable, right? Because we were, we were at the table. I mean, I, I was more of a pain in the ass to them than anything else. Um, but it's important that it's important that, that we do that as media organizations. So register for the RFPs, register to bid on the RFPs. Trust me, you're never going to get it, but that's not the point. The point is to, to be seen at the table. Um, because to somebody's point earlier, yeah, there's so much politics involved in a lot of this. Uh, but 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 the but the change will happen when they start seeing us coalesce as a group and with the center's efforts and Lori's efforts, and then us following up. Um, you know, it it all works together to help make a small change. That's all I wanted to say. I wish I could insert an applause like <laughs> soundtrack after that, Penda, because you're so right. Like um, Lori and us at the center, we can we're going to do everything we can, but it's going to take everything Penda just said to actually make stuff happen. Yeah. And Penda has been wonderful um, in just helping get the, the coalition moving forward. And uh, I saw a comment um, in, from Carlos um, uh, about the idea that digital is changing some of the advertising conversation. Um, and I just wanted to mention, we want to make sure, uh, like I said earlier, we are platform neutral, but some of what um, we are seeing is that states are using these ad agencies just, I think, purely for some simplicity to place big ad spends in social platforms and uh, using, you know, Google ad and, and other kinds of platform uh, placement. And they need to understand that local does not eliminate digital, that you all are doing those kinds of, you know, the similar kinds of um, digital outreach to your audiences. And so getting some of that money back from Facebook and Google is part of our, our intent with this kind of legislation. Uh, we have, I think we have time for one more question. I, uh, Ricky and Kashik, you had your um, hands raised, but Mark has, you've already asked questions, Mark hasn't. Do you want to go or do you want to defer to Mark? Try to get everybody. We'll try okay. to get everybody. I guess we can go like 10, five or 10 minutes over, I guess, then. Yeah, I think Mark, in fairness to Mark, then uh, can ask the question. Well, why don't we start with Mark, and then if we're still riding, then uh, we'll go to you too. Thank you all. Thank I appreciate you. that. Mark, go ahead. You're unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay, fantastic. Um, with agencies, typically agencies like simplicity, so they like to make a big buy. So I'm wondering if there's a way that we can create a group that includes everybody or whosoever will, let the agency buy, do a group buy, and then we split the money up ourselves once we get the money in. I think that's easier than having some agency try and deal with 10 different local ethnic media groups because they don't want to do it. People like People don't like to work. They like to make it easy. <laughs> Uh, just to that point, Mark, 
I was going to say, uh, in other locations, they've created a directory. And so um, yeah. organizations that you all decide should be in the directory would be given to the ad agencies and to the state. And Montclair could serve in a role to help maintain that directory and uh, and manage it to, to that point. Yeah, but the, the idea about a network is a great idea, Mark. And okay. that's something that maybe... Um, you know, well, we can talk about that when we do media kit training, but maybe that's something that one of your organizations wants to take a lead on, or you want us to find a lead partner. We'll go try to find someone. We did this with the ad lab a few years ago and it worked really well, but we haven't been able to get funding to do it again. Um, so it's a great idea. Yeah. Ricky. And then also Diego, I see you that you want to chat too. Yes, the, I think uh, based on what I've heard from from uh, Fenda and also from Mark, though, I think that that's a good idea to have a directory because we're not even invited to participate in any bid processing that uh, this um, department or ad agencies does. So I think, uh, again, harping on what Lori had said, though, we should establish a, uh, a directory of all the ethnic media uh, names or participants in here so that again we could give that to the departments or agencies so that you know when they issue out these RFPs then you know they can choose whichever uh, out of them. All right uh, and Kaushik oh Diego I'm sorry Diego then Kaushik. Um, okay guys I think on on behalf of the Latino community, which which uh, makes up 20%, uh, I think 22% uh, of the state's uh, population, uh, my approach has been really to talk about how much do does the community contribute in tax uh, in taxes to the state, and how does that how is that reflected? From the state in trying to communicate the services and 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 what they do for the people. So uh, when it comes down to informing our community, uh, basically, you know, the our, our problem is that we can't we can't uh, we don't have any access to that um, that money that should be coming to us in order for us to communicate to Latinos. So. Uh, Making it a uh, uh, um, showing that Latinos are contributing to economies, like in Elizabeth, you go to Elizabeth, a uh, great portion of of the of that city's business is Latino, and Trenton is becoming the same way. Uh, showing the, these efforts from the Latinos is going to make the government uh, uh, look our ethnic media as viable ways to communicate what they're doing. And Diego, that, that sort of uh, language and that knowledge you have is exactly what we'll need when we get to the point where we need folks to testify in favor of this, because um, you're exactly right. Yeah, go ahead, Mosin. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Kaushal. Uh Hi, I don't have any question, but uh, you know, I want to thank you, Stephanie, Laurie, Joe, because uh, I told you that I have been doing this newspaper, my newspapers for 33 years. And New Jersey is the neighboring state. And a lot of Bangladeshi people are living there. But after 33 years, I just heard from you this type of things. That is, uh, I think, it's a very positive sign for the ethnic and community newspapers. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah, for being I'm, on board. Yeah, exactly. I'm. Ha I mean, I'm happy slash unhappy, right? Because we, um, it, it, we had a call a couple of weeks ago with a couple of organizations who were questioning: Should we really push this? And um, because I've never, they said I've never heard ethnic or community media even ask about this topic. And our point was: We don't think they know. We don't think most of us. I didn't understand the state RFP ad process or how much money was being spent. Um, and Kaushik, you've been in the business for three decades. Um, so 
uh, you're absolutely right. We, we we want folks to know and um, and work together to see if we can make it more positive for you. I just want to add, you know, something that says, you know, uh, we are very much involved uh, with the activities of uh, New York State and New York City. Yes. We to get the advertising uh, from them. But I always thought that what about New Jersey? Because uh, I know this is a lot of ethnic people are living in that uh, state. But I didn't uh, hear anything uh, from them. So that's why this is a very, you know, positive day for me or those who are doing this ethnic and community newspapers uh, in New Jersey and New, uh, New York State. Yeah, yep, yep, you're right. All right, no, I don't see anyone else have their hand raised, so Moshin, you well, have the, the last uh, word. Yeah, we're talking about uh, directory. If we talk about New, New York City, there is a directory exists in New York City and it is also uh, get updated almost every year or uh, every two years. And that directory is created by the uh, mayor's office and they update the directory every year or, you know, year and so. So I think if directory is created by at the city and state level, that would be more powerful, more authenticated. Uh, yeah. I think, Mosin, I think you make a good point in that. Um, it, so the way that the system exists in New York City is that the directory gets updated periodically. Um, and some of what you'll have to address in designing your own legislation is who's going to do that labor and how will resources be allocated to, to maintain that directory. And so that's something that each location has handled maybe a little bit differently. Um, but that's a decision that you all will need to make and, um, and deciding who who, who will have oversight over that process. Yeah, and ideally it's not a, probably not a politician's office. Right. It's probably some sort of coalition, some other third party organization. Yeah, machine, that's a, because that'll, Lori, that would have to be part of the legislation that this that's group right. would work to propose, right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, and after the so, legislation passed in New York City, this New York uh, mayor's office uh, created an office uh, for the ethnic and community yes. media, and they do all these things. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, and some locations have been resistant to to expend that kind of, you know, uh, those kinds of resources. Um, they ask about like the cost of, of creating that kind of a position or adding that workload to an existing office. And so um, those are some of the things you may have to address um, as you go through this process. Yeah. So, All righty, folks. Yeah, Joe, you want to wrap us up? You yeah, think, that'll everybody? do. That will do it for today. Um, obviously, very lively discussion. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a, once again, you will get a link to a recording. You'll get a link to the transcript, a meeting summary with takeaways, the slides, Lori's contact info, any links and resources shared in the chat. That will all be coming shortly as soon as the video is done processing uh, and I can download it and send it to you all. Um, if there's anything, uh, I don't think there was anything super sensitive discussed here, but if there's anything in retrospect that you'd rather have us cut out or edit just to, for proprietary business stuff, let me know. Shoot me an email, mdsj at uh, montclair.edu, um, and uh, we'll take care of that. So again, you'll get everything in about an hour probably as soon as it's done processing. And uh, just thank you again. This is the beginning. This is not the end. Uh, this is going to be an iterative process, and I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving break, and I look forward to working to build this uh, power coalition with you all going forward. So have a great week. Have a great Giving Tuesday, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.